this entitled parent continues her destructive ways as she ruins her son's education at school. And it seems her entitlement is contagious, as her daughter is now showing the same behaviors. Is there any hope for this family? Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. Act 2. The Fallout. Eventually, because mum wasn't getting a job or doing anything to help herself, dad stopped giving her money. The only thing left dad was doing for her was taking me over to her house. Because again, he felt it was the man thing to do. He accepted full responsibility of taking me and my sister over to my mother's house to see her whenever we wanted to. My sister never wanted to go over, so it was just me and mum. I wanted to be fair to both parents. I wanted to stay with mum for a week, then stay with dad for a week. During this time, mum would try convincing me that dad was the real bad guy in the whole situation, that he was just manipulative, that he was taking substances, while her face and skin was tearing from all of the stuff she'd been doing in my absence. I was a bleach blonde kid growing up. I had bright hair, but during all of this, I ended up staying inside more and more. My hair wasn't getting any sun anymore. Evidently, this was the cause of my hair turning dirt brown. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just what makes sense during that time. It'd be nice to know if that was the case. I liked my blonde hair. Eventually, child services became involved. The school had notified them when they'd seen me change from disruptively energetic to quiet, falling asleep in class and smelling awful. I wasn't socializing anymore. I was sitting alone, which was honestly because of my nasty bullying problem I had growing up. I went to a vile school growing up, <laughs> but that's another story. I wasn't even trying anymore. I don't know what all happened, or if it's even how it went. I guess the staff noticed signs of neglect? I don't know. My grades were never spectacular. Average at best. An A or two, mostly Bs and maybe a C sneaking around somewhere. But during all of this, they had taken a noticeable nosedive. Take all of this and the fact I went to a school with students that weren't above using my parents' divorce as a way to hurt me. I honestly considered self-destruction. I don't want to touch too much on this here, it's not really relevant to the story, the play-by-play -play of this part. The school noticed that I was coming to school clean, fully rested, and only mildly participating in class. Socializing was still garbage, but again, that was for a different reason. They noticed all of these improvements every week I was with Dad. Then I went back to my mother's. All life was just sucked out of me. So they called my dad in, asked for an explanation, to which he explained what I just explained that I was staying a week with him and a week with my mother. This week I was staying with him. So when they saw me that day, they took note of my improved health. They asked me questions, told me that I was probably going to end up living with dad and not seeing mum nearly as much. I don't remember this part as well, but I remember the parts that my dad told me happened. I said I was relieved, relieved that I didn't have to choose and that even as a kid, I knew dad was better for me. That much I remember saying. Dad said saying that caught him off guard. He knew I was a huge mama's boy and that the only reason he was letting me go to mum's was because he didn't want to hurt me by not letting me see her. But since I said that, dad went whole hog making sure he got me, at least during the week. He didn't want to rob mum of seeing her children. So I still went and visited her on weekends. That's how things went for a while. I know people say, this was the best decision of my life, or that was the best decision of my life, usually as a form of exaggeration. But I mean it with all my heart. I think choosing to live with dad was truly the best decision of my life. I know, not think, know, that I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am now in life if I stayed with mum. I know this part was a little shorter, but there wasn't as much to cover here. We'll get back to my mother in Act 4. It was about here that my sister began to act up. The next part is going to be more so about my sister. Act 3. The Sister. My dad and sister suddenly stopped seeing eye to eye, which was kinda surprising to me. As I was a mama's boy, she was a daddy's girl. I honestly don't know what changed. I think it was a mix of my sister's adolescence and my dad coping with the divorce. 
My sister was constantly throwing hissy fits and not wanting to accept dad's side of the story. I don't know what her deal was. I never bothered arguing back with my parents when I was getting pushed because I knew, inside, I was in the wrong. Such as me getting my Xbox taken away when my grades were bad, etc. I think she was spoiled growing up. She had the bigger bedroom, the big TV, whatever phone she wanted, a bunk bed, despite us not sharing a room, and her being the only one occupying it, and even a laptop. When mum and dad divorced, dad gave her the master bedroom in the place he got when he moved out, which had a huge bathroom with speakers in the ceiling. By this point, mum was no longer living on the old farm. In fact, my grandmother, her mother, was lending her a house to live in. I didn't have her bedroom or anything. Meanwhile, I got the smallest room in the house. This upset me. Not because, oh my gosh, dad give me expensive stuff. It was the blatant favoritism. Whenever I brought it up with dad, why she was getting all the nice stuff, he always responded with, you gotta treat girls a little more nicely, which I can get, but this is more than just more nicely. This is spoiling. I didn't give a darn whether or not dad started giving me new expensive stuff. That's not what it was about. I just didn't understand why dad seemed to pick her so much over me. I don't know if he wanted to give her more love since the divorce was giving her a hard time or what. To be honest, I know dad shouldn't pick one of us over the other. I know I shouldn't expect that of him, and I didn't. It was a matter of that there was no choice to be made, but it felt like he picked my sister anyway. I know today that's likely not what it is, Maybe it was self-conscious. Maybe he felt like his relationship with his daughter was falling apart and he was trying to win her with materialistic things. I'm not sure. I don't want to ask him today and let it slip that I felt he picked a favorite child. For clarification, like I said, I don't give a darn that my dad wasn't giving me expensive stuff. That wasn't my issue. My issue was that it felt like blatant favoritism for my sister. Just wanted to repeat that in case anyone read that as, Daddy isn't buying me expensive gifts. Because I know there will be those illiterate dudes who will read it like that. Better to say it twice for those in the back, eh? Back to the story. One day, after a particularly bad fight between the two, she told me that dad was the one taking substances, not mum. It didn't register at the time, but it seems like mum got to her. I guess she and mum had been texting? She seems to believe mum's side over dad's, despite everything dad has to prove his side. My sister has always been kind of a know-it-all, even today. She'll be 24 in a month and will act like a child if she is proven wrong. She never could admit she was wrong. And even today, in the new crap show she's gotten herself in, she still will find a way to blame what's happened to her on dad. Now that I think about it, as I type this, maybe my sister could qualify as an entitled parent. Oh, whoopsies, spoilers. We'll get to that, believe me, it's no surprise. One day, my sister meets a boy as far as I'm aware, he's still a cool bro. He doesn't really have much relevance within the story. Then my dad takes my sister to mum's. All of a sudden, she wants to be at mum's after months of not wanting to see her. I guess it makes sense considering the circumstance. Dad probably thought it could be where she could cool things off since things were heated between him and her. She went to mum's, who ended up taking her to this boy's house where she stayed the night. Dad caught wind of this, as someone who knew saw her with this boy and brought it up, I think. I'm still not clear on how he found out. So he calls mum and asks her to put my sister on the phone. Mum plays dumb and says sister is with her. Dad calls bullcrap and tells her to put my sister on the phone and mum changes her story. Well, she may be out with the boy right now. She'll be back later. May be out with the boy right now? How do you not know where our daughter is? I just dropped her off with you. I don't know what the big deal is. Dad is ticked. Dad asks where they are, and mum continues to play dumb, saying, I thought you knew. Dad hangs up, then calls my sister. He asks where she's at, and she says she's at mum's. Boom. 
like Hort. Dad can't take it anymore at this point. He tells her that if she thinks she can scheme with Mum to lie to him, then she can stay with Mum. This is when he calls me up and asks me to help him pack up her things. After loading everything up, we take off into the dead of night, drop everything off in mum's backyard, shoot her a text, then take off like ninjas. Nobody even knew we were there until we sent that text. Dad decides to give my sister the same treatment he gave mum. The list. Gave her a perfectly sensible list to follow if she wanted a chance to have a relationship with dad. Good grades. Don't lie. No going out with friends anymore. No phone. And a few other things I can't remember. All I know was thinking, well shoot, I could follow this list. Although I do think this is where dad kinda messed up. I mean, he basically told her, you're going to be punished if you come back to me. Which pretty much meant she was staying with mom. It was either dad messed up or I'm remembering the list wrong. Either way, my sister for darn sure wasn't coming back. Regardless, just like my dad did with my mother, he predicted what would happen to her if she didn't get her stuff together. He said she was going to become a teen mum, wasn't going to do crap to raise her kids, and basically screw her future. What do you know? Dad was right. A year later, my sister is telling me that she's pregnant. There's not a lot that happens in these next few years throughout my high school life, but maybe two years after her first kid, she has a second child with another baby daddy. Then about nine to ten months ago, she has a third child with another baby daddy. During this time throughout all of this, she eventually started talking to my dad again who remarried to a woman much more worthy of being called mother. She, stepmother, and dad talked to my sister about what she can do to make things easier for herself. By this time, she was on kid number two. They told her if she went to college to learn a trade or something that could land her a good paying job, that the colleges around here will help single mothers by providing daycares for their children while the parents go to school. This went in one ear and out the other. At this time, she and I were talking occasionally, had a pretty meh relationship. We got along fine. One night I was texting her and told her about the college daycare situation my parents told her about. She was shocked, told me that if she knew that, she would have considered it sooner. Despite the fact that the only reason I knew about the college daycare was because I was in the room when they told her about it. She always blew them off and anyone else who dared criticize her crappy life decisions. My grandmother on my mother's side included. I would see her post about a new tattoo on Snapchat. Then that very next freaking snap, she'd be complaining about being too broke. Then the next day she would snap, 45 minutes late for work, about to get beat out of my B boss. <laughs> Hashtag mom life. I usually avoided criticizing her crappy choices because I know darn well how she'd react. But one day, she was venting about a fight her and dad had. She told me what he said, and I knew exactly what he meant from her own words of the story. He said, those kids aren't going to have the lives they deserve because of you. Which really means, because you keep on pussyfooting around, being lazy, making excuses, those kids won't have the lives that they deserve. He followed up that statement with that translation because it did come across as harsh. But sis kinda left that part out. He said that as it was her fault, because it was, she is perfectly capable of giving those kids the lives they deserve. But she just does jack all about it. She hasn't even tried getting child support from any of the fathers because she'd feel bad about it. She wouldn't even have to work if she's getting child support from all of the fathers. The first child's father is actually a freaking beast. He took up full responsibility and pounces on any opportunity to see and help take care of his child. The rest are deadbeats. The way the argument started was because my sister was asking for gas money from dad, which my dad refused. My sister's a big girl now. She can handle it herself. Plus, if she can load herself up with piercings, tattoos, and pedicures, she can afford gas. To which she threw out this one. Wow, I guess I shouldn't have expected a little more help from my own father. When this all went down, I had actually just started listening to Reddit stories when I'm working. So when I heard that, the first thing that crossed my mind was, is my sister a choosing beggar? 
The best part? Dad wasn't the one who told me she said that the first time. She was. She didn't seem to realize Dad had no obligation to help her because we're family. Later, Dad told me that's what she said, and I showed him her text message to me. At this point, I couldn't keep quiet anymore. I finally told her that I too had a problem with her crappy choices. I broke down everything I've seen with her SC. All her dumb choices. Choosing to get her nails done, $50 for both her and one of her kids, etc. To which she wrote me a book making excuse after excuse, dropping stuff like, why are all of you so judgmental of me? And I'm a great mother. And of course, none of you understand how hard it is being a single mother. To which she got her last laugh in and blocked me. I then later heard she made a post about me online. My name wasn't dropped or anything. I wasn't the only one it was directed at either. She basically made up all the same excuses as she did to me in the post. I couldn't see it, but my stepmom did. About a month later, she unblocked me and wished me a happy birthday. We didn't really talk much. We just left it at that. Ain't spoken to her since. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.